shut off the negativity, turn up the positivity, and, uh, and go make the world a better place. There's a lot of opportunity coming our way. Episode 87. Hello and welcome to the Business of Architecture UK. I am your host, Ryan Willard, and this week I have been flexing my Zoom account yet again and I'm speaking with Mark R. LePage, who, of course, is the founder of Entree Architect. He's the podcast host of Entree Architect. He is also a CEO and principal of Five Cat Studio, which is his architectural practice, and he's also the CEO of Gable Technologies. Mark was originally based in Westchester, and he's just relocated to North Carolina, and this was a wonderful opportunity for me to be able to speak with one of the early podcasts of architecture and business hosts uh, and to really draw upon Mark's experience, his expertise, and also to discuss the future of architecture, particularly in the context of what we're living through right now, where there's a lot of pessimism and fear and concern and you know rightly so there's how to deal with the next few months is going to be absolutely critical and to hear Mark's optimistic and bright future of what it is that we need to be doing as architects how we can diversify how important it is to really master the game of business and to embrace that and to think beyond what the traditional scope of what the architect does is one of the fundamental keys to creating this bright future, particularly in a post-corona world. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the wonderful Mark R. LePage. So massive thank you to all of you for listening and supporting the Business of Architecture UK for the last couple of years. Big shout out to those of you who have come to our live events, attended the webinars, and of course to those of you who have downloaded the weekly podcast and have been listening to them on your bicycles. And as you know, we love helping architects win meaningful and profitable work, but it's not always that simple to implement these ideas or translate them into something that will work for you. So what I wanted to do was to invite you onto a quick 15 minute chat with myself we can both grab a cup of tea and I'd like to ask you about what content you found most valuable and why and what you'd like to hear more of and I'd also love to hear more about your business and what you're building at the moment and where you are headed to business wise in 2020 so there's no charge or any obligation with this call just simply to find out how our content has been of value and if we get that far and with your permission of course what might be next what might be possible and how Business of Architecture UK could be supportive of that. Does that sound fair? Brilliant. So if you want to book a 15-minute chat with me, I'm calling these calls the BOA UK Discovery Call or just simply a chat with Ryan. Use the link in the information and I look forward to speaking to you. Mark, welcome to the Business of Architecture UK. Absolute pleasure and honor to have you on the show. It's an honor, Ryan. I, uh, I, I've, I've been following you as well for a long time, and, uh, and Enoch and I have been friends for a long time, so I, I really appreciate everything that you're doing. So it's an honor to be here with you today. Amazing. And it's, you know, we're in these really bizarre, unusual times at the moment where we're kind of confined to our rooms, and some of us have kind of are well-versed in being online. Um, and it's yeah, and it's it's great actually to use this time as an opportunity to reach out and connect with other people who are serving the architectural community in a similar way across the world. So great. Um, I, I sort of want to start the conversation really was by asking you about your background, about your story, and how how did you start both Five Cat Studio and also what's the story behind your ventures into broadcasting and podcasting? Yeah. I'd be happy to share that story. Um, well, my, <laughs> excuse me, I have this little nagging cough, so I apologize <laughs> if, I, if I cough in everybody's ear every once in a while. It's uncontrollable. Um, it's non-COVID. <laughs> I can you. It's North Carolina pollen. That's what it is. Um, so it started back in the 90s. Um, the, the, you know, sort of my career started back in the 90s. My wife and I are both architects. Right. Uh, Anne-Marie Anne -Marie McCarthy is my wife and my partner at Five Cat Studio. 
And um, we met in my first job out of school. It was her second job. And um, we, we were back in New Jersey. I was in New Jersey. She lived in, uh, in New York, just over the border, and just happened to land in the same firm and, and instantly had a connection. And, uh, and I won't go into the whole, the whole love story, but, but uh, eventually we moved our way to, um, to Westchester County, New York, uh, got married, and uh, worked for separate firms. And I always wanted to have my own firm. Mm. As a child, I've always wanted to to have my own firm. I'm I'm a an entrepreneur. You know, in in my blood is entrepreneurism, and so it's never been a consideration of not having my own firm. And so um, we launched our firm in 1999, Five Cat Studio, and uh, and we very quickly, Anne Marie and I, sort of found our place within that firm. Um, I I joke all the time that together we make the perfect architect because Anne Marie loves design, loves architecture, is a, is a fantastic designer, yep. loves houses specifically. And, uh, and I have a passion for business. I have a passion for how business works and how the game of business works. And I love working with people and, and doing all the FaceTime work with, with clients. And so together we work as a really great team. And so we built that firm and that firm became very successful as a, as a residential firm in Westchester County in New York. And um, I know Westchester County actually. I've, Excuse me. I know Westchester County. I've been, oh, yeah? I've been there. Very green. It's beautiful. It is very green. Yeah, it's uh, it it is a beautiful place, and I miss it because now we in July of this year we moved to North Carolina. Right. Um, so now we are in North Carolina. We are about a half hour south of Charlotte, North Carolina. Right. Okay. Very very green here too, and about two months ahead in their season. So we have you know. Uh, it's almost summertime here in, ter- in terms of the weather. Uh, so I'm loving it here. But uh, so we started the firm in, in, in Westchester County. We were there for over 20 years and uh, built it into a really successful local residential architecture firm. And um, because I love business and I love the, the whole idea of business, I, I, I love business books and I love, you know, reaching out on uh, on blogs and I read blogs and I read and I listen to podcasts. And even back in the nineties, I just sort of wanted to consume as much as I could. Mm -hmm. And so, um, as a way for me to document my, the knowledge I was gaining, I just, I started a blog. Um, I had started a blog for the firm in 2006 called living well in Westchester, which is no longer a blog, but you could probably find pieces of it still out there. Um, in 2007, I started a second blog called Entrepreneur Architect, and it was really just my own personal place to drop my own knowledge. So wherever I, I, you know, found a, an article or a link or something, I would post it on there and I would just write a little reminder about what it was. And it was really for me to sort of catalog what I had. And it very, very quickly found an audience mm-hmm. because as you know, and as Enoch knows back then, there was nothing, there was nothing about business for architects at all, anywhere. Even the AIA really didn't talk about business in the late nineties very much, especially for small firms. Yeah. And, and so, so this community very quickly found it. it. It became a community within that blog. It was way before social media uh, had blown up. And so the comment section was, sort of our community. I would post something and then we would get, you know, 20, 25 comments on, on these blog posts. And that community sort of bonded and started becoming friends online like we've all become. And, um, and that community was the one that over the years of me blogging encouraged me to make it into something bigger. They said, you know, you're doing a great job here in the blog because eventually it became not my blog. It became a community. Yeah. And, and so I, I, I uh, nourished that community and I cultivated it and it, and it blossomed and they said, you know, you should start a magazine or you should do something. You should start a website around this and, and build something bigger. And so with that encouragement, um, after many years of procrastination and, and fear in, in, induced, you know, <laughs> you know, not doing it. Um, at the end of um, 2012, I announced on the blog that you know um, I, I recognized that 
we were going to have the date December 12th, 2012. So we were going to have 12, 12, 12. And I thought that would be a great opportunity uh, to, to sort of do something big. Yeah. And so I wrote, wrote a blog post called um, the 12, 12, 12 project. I didn't tell anybody what it was. And I wrote the blog post and the, the blog post essentially said, I'm committing to do something life changing for myself, some big goal, some big thing that, I, that could, could change my life and contribute to the bigger world. And I encouraged everybody else to do the same thing. And that was what the blog post was. And that's still, that's still on the blog if you, if you search it. Uh, and I didn't tell anybody what it was. And then on December 12th, 2012, I had set that deadline specifically to hold myself accountable by announcing it to the world. Now I have a deadline. I have to do something. So d December 10th, December 11th, I'm scrambling to put together <laughs> something that was going to, you know, go live I, on December 12th. And so I got the blog put together. I got the domain set up. Um, and my plan was to launch entrearchitect.com. So I had the URL, relaunched the, the blog on a new domain dedicated uh, to architects. And that was the idea, create a, uh, a place that was dedicated to the small firm architect mm. where they can learn how to run better businesses. Um, and since day one, that's been, been the mission. And the same day, December 12, 2012, actually at 12, 12, I, I had it scheduled. So it was December 12, 2012 <laughs> at 12, 12 uh, in the afternoon, the first episode of Entre Architect podcast also was released that same same day, same time. So the, the website was launched and the podcast was launched on December 12, 2012. The first year, the podcast was monthly just to sort of figure out how, how, how to do it and, mm. and, um, and sort of get started. And that first 12 episodes were specifically, they, they coincided with 12 blog posts that I had also written um, that were, were the, the 12 foundational fundamentals of business. And so there was one on sales, there was one on marketing, there was one on productivity, one on planning, 12 of them. And so there were 12, uh, and those are also on the blog. People sort of go deep, dive, dive deep into the blog, you'll find them. Um, and, uh, and so every month I would do a, a podcast and a blog post on, um, on each one of these fundamentals. And that also very quickly blew up and became very popular. And, uh, and so the second year after those 12 months were over, I went weekly and it's been weekly ever since. And now we're into 320 episodes or somewhere around there. Amazing. Amazing. So, yeah. how, how did you find running the podcast and doing the kind of the early stages of the community? How was that impacting or influencing your work at five cat studio? Yeah. The, the, well, early on, it, uh, you know, we were very busy. We had a full staff at that, that time. Um, we had a, a firm of six people. Uh, well, actually, not in the 90s. It wasn't, well, no, 2012. Yeah, we had, still had a staff. And, um, and we were full-time architects, you know, and, and this was a hobby, mm -hmm. right? And I, and, I, and I launched it as a business, as something that was going to become bigger than me. It was always the intention of something, of something big. Um, but obviously, you know, you start small yeah. and you, where it goes. And over the last seven plus years, it's, it's flipped where Entre Architect and the, the community around it and all the things that we're doing with the membership and the workshops that we're doing. And now with Gable and Gable Media, um, that has by far is now my primary focus. Uh, it's, essentially 100% of my, my time. Mm. We still practice because we moved from New York to North Carolina. We had this transition anyway. And so as we were sort of uh, getting prepared to move from New York to North Carolina, we brought our business down in New York, shut the doors in New York, brought the firm to North Carolina, reestablishing the firm here in North Carolina, but we haven't yet launched it. And so it's here we're established, but we're not practicing. And the intent is when we were in New York, we were practicing uh, client-based residential, mostly additions and alterations. If you know Westchester County, it's very built up. It's pretty old housing stock, uh, beautiful homes, really big high-end houses mostly. And that was our, that was our niche. Our niche was small, uh, high-end small projects. Right. And so we did 
additions and alterations, kitchens, family rooms, master bedroom suites, big garages, all the things that the big residential firms that were designing big houses didn't want. And we found that niche and sort of built a brand around it and became very successful at doing that. Um, the plan now, now that we're in North Carolina, where we are, it's very new development. We're actually, it's, it's all farmland being built up by the mm. big builders. So it's all high, you know, it's all big builder development, cookie cutter, you know, houses. And our plan is to do residential development, you know, high end custom one off houses uh, within all of this craziness that they're building down here. Brilliant. Car carve out our own niche and do uh, development. And so we'll design and build and develop our own homes uh, when we get to that point in our, in our time. Well, now, now with the world sort of in a very <laughs> different place, that schedule obviously is pushed down a little bit, but that's the plan is to, yeah. is to do more development. And, and, and it's great as well because you've, obviously you've got the kind of extensive community that you've been building up online. So it's kind of easy to continue working on Entree Architect and building that community whilst you're, whilst we're all in lockdown, I suppose. What, what was the, yeah. what's the work you're doing with Gable? You were saying the yeah, Gable media or actually Gable technologies is the company. Um, and it's spelled Gable without any, it's G A B L with a little line over the A. So everybody says it right. Yeah. Um, and so it's, it's the intent is something that I've wanted to do for a long time. It's, it's been, a, it's, if you go back in my journals, probably 20 years ago, you can see seeds of it. And the idea is to sort of take Entree Architect to the next level and build, build the technology that we all need to be better, better architects and, and run better businesses. Mm. And so Entree Architect is sort of the community and the training and the knowledge and Gable Media, well, Gable, Gable Media is something else, but Gable Technologies is intended to develop technology in, in order to develop software and, and online platforms and that kind of thing. Brilliant. It's a little ahead of schedule yeah. because it was something that I had planned to do. But when we moved from New York to North Carolina, uh, Entree Architect was registered in New York as an LLC. And because the company moved and the owners moved, New York doesn't allow non-residents that the business is no longer in, North, in New York to remain LLC. So I had to shut down Entree Architect LLC and I said, well, instead of launching Entree Architect LLC in North Carolina, let's just launch Gable Technologies now. Oh, I see, right. And, and sort of build it as a holding company that allows us to, it'll, it owns now uh, Entree Architect. Yeah. It now owns Gable Media and it will develop the software and technologies that we want to build in the future. And so that's a future plan, but the company's here ready to do it. And then Gable Media is, a, is an idea that the Entree Architect podcast has become so popular mm. and there's been such an, a, a, um, a demand for, uh, for media, for audio and, and video media, as you and Enoch both know, you guys are doing a great job. So we recognized that same trend and said, well, why don't we build a company that allows other architects and other design professionals to create podcasts? And so we've developed this company and this structure that allows people who have knowledge that they want to share to, we, they can partner with us. We have the, the, the expertise and the knowledge of how to, how to do that um, and how to make it a business, how to monetize that. And so people can share their knowledge without having to do all the, the, you know, the dirty work mm -hmm. on the back end. And so uh, that's the idea. And there's a couple of different ways we're going to do that. Um, we just rolled out our first new podcast. Uh, Entree Architect is, you know, seven years old. We launched a new podcast a few weeks ago called uh, Build Your Brand Podcast. Yeah, I spoke to Jeff with, the other day about it. With Jeff Eccles. Brilliant. Yep. He's, he, he did a fantastic job with that. I hired Demetrius Lynch from Spaces Podcast, who does a really great job as well with his, his editing and his production is super high quality. And so he and I have been talking for a long time too. Mm. I said, well, why don't you come over here? You know, let's start this together. And, uh, and so I brought him on as my creative director and he essentially is, is building um, the, the structure of Gable Media and he and, and um, Jeff created Build Your Brand Podcast, which is a, a spinoff from a workshop that we've created inside Entree Architect. Uh, Build Your Brand Workshop teaches architects how to 
um, build a brand, how to do a marketing strategy and, and build your brand. And after that, I said, well, Jeff, this, this, we need to continue doing this. Yeah. And so when I teamed up with Demetrius, it was the immediate thought was, well, let's go to Jeff and see if he wants to do a podcast. And he's like, yeah. And you've heard Jeff's voice is like, <laughs> the right, built, built right a podcast. Yeah. yeah. So it's like a no brainer. Let's do this. And so they did it such a good job uh, with the, the quality and the editing of that show. I'm really proud of what they've, what they've done. So that's our first show. And we're talking to several other, other people who've committed to doing shows as well. So we're in the early stages of development on a few more other shows that are coming out. Brilliant. Oh, it's, it's so inspiring. It's really, really inspiring to hear and, hear and see this. Um, Thank you. Have, have you found that over the last, say, the late 90s up till now, that the demands that are being asked from architects in business or the things that architects are finding as obstacles in their businesses, has that changed much in the last 20 years? Is now a very different um, context. I mean, obviously with coronavirus, it is a completely new context, but yeah. sort of pre-corona, has, has there been a big shift from your perspective? I don't think the profession in terms of what our clients and customers are expecting has shifted very much. I think we're doing a better job at telling the story of what architects do, yeah. which has always traditionally been a problem mm. uh, for generations. That's been a problem. This generation of architects, you know, uh, who are, who are practicing now in the last 10 or 20 years and the new architects that are, that are entering the profession are much more entrepreneurial. They are much more focused on running businesses. Yeah. Um, and I think that, I think that, credit goes to Enoch and, and Entre Architect for sort of pointing that out. Because I think even the AIA from the work that Enoch and I have done has, have been much more influenced. I think they're talking about business more as a reflection from the demand that Enoch and I have sort of created. Because people were looking for it, we provided it, and now it's sort of, I think the profession is shifting. And I think that's the biggest change, is I think that architects across the world are, are understanding that if they want to be great architects, they must build the business first. Mm. And there's still resistance in somewhere, but um, I think most of us now understand that it's a business and yes, we are creative and we are artists and we want to create and change the world, but you can't do that unless you have a foundation. And the foundation is your financial foundation. It's the business that allows you to be that creative person. And I think that's probably the biggest shift is that, is that architects are now recognizing that they need to be more entrepreneurial. They yeah. need to run better businesses. And they're seeing the results of what happens when they do that. Mm. You know, the, the people that, that, that you and Enoch are working with and the people that are in Entre Architect and the, inside the membership and inside the community, they are seeing the changes and other architects are witnessing that as well and recognizing that, well, I need to do that too if I want to create great architects. And it's interesting that you say that, that this, there is a, a generational shift as well. Like a lot of, oh, a lot of students that I'm talking, I mean, I have students contacting me who are, you know, 19, 20 years old, who are talking about property development and, you know, different ways of branding and marketing themselves on YouTube and, uh, yeah. and, and often some of the, the, the how do I say the older generation of architects are, are, are more reticent or even, you know, I've, I've had criticisms about even talking about business as an architect. Exactly. Right. Is, yeah. is that the domain? You know, you are architects. We're just trying to make a few quid and do, do beautiful buildings. We shouldn't be talking about business. Um, yeah. So it is interesting. There's a, there's that, that shift generationally. And also I suppose the kind of context of, uh, of how architects are perceived in today's society as well might be shifting and that it's it's you know there's a lot of potential there to be an entrepreneur and be an architect and merge those two skill sets together very much so yeah yeah i the i agree with you 100 percent that the that the younger generation is is inherently entrepreneurial mm. they are coming into the profession with a business mindset and that's because of the internet the 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 younger generation has grown up with the internet you know i i witnessed the internet's you know not the birth of it, <laughs> it was born before <laughs> I was. But, but, the, but the, the cultural shift yeah. you know, happened in the early 90s, uh, late 90s, around right when I started my firm. When I, when I started my firm, I was one of the only architects in the entire county of Westchester that had a website. In, 
in the late nineties, right? And so architects are traditionally behind, behind the, 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 um, uh, adoption of technology. Yeah. And I think that the younger architects that are entering the profession were born with an iPad in their hand and they, they, they understand how technology works. They understand the power of social media. It is just the way they live. It's just part of their life. Mm. And so it just makes, it doesn't, it would not make sense for them to come in and not understand that business matters and, and, and marketing matters and branding matters because they grew up being told that over and over and over again through the internet. And the other side, the older generations, there, there are still a few pockets where, like what you said, where architects sort of feel that business is not something that they should be dealing with, or especially money. You know, that mm -hmm. if you start talking about fees, there are some older architects that get nervous. And that is because of the AIA and their antitrust lawsuits in the 70s uh, and 90s, where they, they essentially created guidelines for architects that uh, the American architects were not allowed to talk about fees at all, right? With, but if you read the rules, and I'm sure you have, that the rules say you can't do it within the form of the AIA. But because of most architects were members of the AIA, they just took it on as understanding that we can't talk about business at all or else the government will come and get us, right? Yeah. And so for a generation, maybe even two generations, architects didn't talk about business because they were afraid to talk about mm. business. They were afraid that they would be punished for it. And, and even prior to that, architects were taught that architects don't do that. Architects don't advertise. They don't market themselves. They don't build brands. They just create architecture. They're artists and they're, you know, that's the way it's done, but that's shifted too. And so when I first started Entree Architect and I would start, you know, even in the blog, when I would start talking about fees, I would get, you know, really sincere, kind, older architects writing me privately saying, Mark, you really ought to not do that. You're going to get in trouble. <laughs> right. And so, and then I would write back saying, and I would show them why it's okay. And, and I don't get that anymore. Right. You know, I don't even, even the older generation now have been, have, have now understand been educated of why it's okay. Right. And, and it's not about, uh, the antitrust lawsuits and collusion, it's about the AIA's rules for their members. Um, so the AIA doesn't get in trouble. Yeah. That's what that, that's all about. Um, and architects are realizing that, that the only way that we are going to succeed is if we start sharing information and start sharing how, what we know, each know about business, including money and including fees. And as long as you're not colluding as long as you're not coming together and saying okay we're all going to charge 10 percent for architects and no one's allowed to not charge anything but 10 percent that's illegal yeah. but saying hey i charge 12 percent. what do you charge that's not illegal other professions do it other businesses do it um and we can have an entire conversation about that but that's a big shift since you know since i started what, what do you think is the one of the biggest problems or obstacles that architects are, are currently facing now um, and you know the conversations i have on the podcast you know whenever we talk about fees that is by far and away the most sensitive subject and the kind of there is a lot of uh anxiety about the architect's fees are typically very low when compared to other types of professions. Is that the yeah. same in the US? That, that, that it's a, it's a big, very much so. A big obstacle yeah. that architects are facing and the reasons yeah. why? Fee, fees are always a big conversation and, and it's been since I started. That you, you, you put the word fees in a title and it will blow up, right? <laughs> and, and people, because people want to, they, they want to know more information about it. Um, and, you know, people recognize that they need money to do what they want to do. Um, but, but the conversation of fees is definitely something that, that, that we're struggling with as a profession, but I don't think that's the, that's the foundation of the problem. Mm -hmm. I think the reason we have problems with our fees is because we don't, um, the value of what we do is not understood. And that's because we don't tell our story very well. The, 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 organ, the AIA um, and the large uh, professional organizations don't tell our story very well. 
for years, we were not allowed to tell our story from a business point of view. And so we are generations, decades behind where we should be if we were doing that all, all along. Um, and so, and I think that's shifting as well. I think architects under, are starting to understand that their, their online presence is important and what we do with that online presence is important, that our websites are, should not be portfolios, but they should be storytelling and yeah. they should be marketing and they should be sales tools to bring leads into your firm so you can you know, have great architecture and build a brand around it so the right leads come in. You know, and, and we're all sort of putting that together. And that's where the fees are going to go up when the value is understood of what we do where when we start expanding our knowledge and our services beyond just designing buildings because we are problem solvers and there's an entire world out there of, of additional services and additional uh, professions and additional businesses that we all can be, be exploring as architects, not leaving the profession, quote unquote, you know, because that's what a lot of architects are afraid of. I can't not design buildings because then I won't be an architect. If you go through architecture school, and you go through the process of becoming a licensed architect, you are always an architect. I don't care what you do. You can go start a cookie stand and you are an architect who is running a cookie stand. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you're taking all that knowledge and skill and, and information and, and um, uh, problem solving skills that you have to that cookie stand. And I know that's a ridiculous example, but you, are, you will always be an architect. Mm. You know, just because I've created Entree Architect and just because I've built Gable Media, there's no way anybody could tell me that I'm not an architect. Just because I haven't designed a, a you know, I haven't drawn a, a, a building in a couple of years. Yeah. Right? The, I will always be an architect. The, the, this is so interesting because you know, I'm very much of the, the same and, you know, the the remit of what architects do is is beyond just designing buildings you know it's architectural thinking and problem solving can be applied to the city and can be applied to products and manufacturing you can take it into marketing you can take the same thinking into businesses and how we think uh, you know how, that's that way of thinking from detail to expansive and connecting ideas and you know, my own personal story in architecture, it was very difficult to let go of designing buildings. And I, similarly, I speak to many architects where the, the, the borough, if you like, of training is very focused on once you've become an architect, once you're licensed, then what you do is you design buildings. And actually, right. we're leaving so much latent potential on the table when we do that. And that a building isn't always the right answer as well. Uh, right. and, and that that excites me. That I'm so glad you said that. And not and not only are we we leaving so much on the table for ourselves, it is our responsibility in the world as architects to take the knowledge we have and serve the world with it. And because there are so many pro look around how many problems we have right now. Mm. Big, giant, massive global problems. Who is the best who is, who is more equipped to solve big problems than architects? We are, trained, we are naturally problem solvers or else we would not have pursued architecture. And then we're trained to, pro to solve problems and then we practice solving problems. So why don't we go solve some big problems? And so by expanding the, the definition of what architects are and what architects do, yeah. which we, we own, what architects do so we can do whatever we want to do as a profession. If the profession says architects are no longer just designing buildings, but architects are problem solvers and yes, and I'm not saying abandon designing buildings. If you love designing buildings, design away. We need as many architects designing buildings as we possibly can mm. because our environment is super important. The, the built environment is super important. The way we live, the buildings within of, of which we play and work and live, affect who we are as human beings. So architects should absolutely be forever designing buildings, but we should be also expanding the definition of what we do and how we do it to solve other problems mm -hmm. and bigger problems. Um, and, and we can do that, especially 
now with the communities that we're building on the internet where we have thousands of connected network ar networked architects, um, we can leverage that, that connection, that network very easily to then you know, take some big global problems and use the, the brain power of the community of architects mm. to solve some really, really big problems. Yes, yes, love it. That is a very, very compelling future for the potential of architecture. And it circumvents this concern around fees as well, because when we're kind of relinquished what it is that everyone thinks an architect should be doing, there is enormous amount of potential and different problems to be solved and many which can be hugely scalable and you know you can create more value than you could possibly imagine um how and and, and ryan just one one last thing before you ask that question and if we don't the profession will become extinct we will become obsolete if we just focus on buildings and that's all we do the profession is going to go away mm. Because there, there are other industries and other professions and other businesses that will see the, the opportunities that are blossoming all around us and other industries will come in and they will gobble up more and more and more and more of the responsibility and the roles that we have as architects. And eventually it will, our profession will be so small and own, so un, insignificant, which is why everybody's complaining because that's happening right yeah. now. Yeah. And we're all feeling it and we're complaining about it, but we're not doing anything about it. Mm -hmm. Well, many of us are doing a lot about it. Um, and I believe the profession is shifting too. The profession is recognizing it. The more that you say what you say and the more of what I say and what more of what Enoch says and all the other, other leaders out there that are trying to also expand the, the world of architecture, it's shifting. It's moving in that direction. But if it doesn't, if we just stay here and stay focused and, and hide from all those, you know, the liability of all that and the fear of building, building beyond, you know, uh, the traditional firms, we will be extinct. We will go away. There will no, their architects will no longer exist. Yeah. Other professions will do what we do. That's very sobering. And also there's inspiring as well. Uh, ha, it, from your experience of dealing with um, some of the institutions, the AIA, the ROBA in the UK, what has been your experience in terms of this kind of thinking that mm -hmm. you've encountered? And obviously it's difficult to, you know, this is a big institution, it's many people with many, many ideas, but. Yeah, I, the, big, the big organizations, the big institutions are like battleships or ca uh, carriers. They're these massive giant organizations. Um, I, I see the, the trend with both, both of the organizations, the organizations that you talked about, that they're also moving in the right direction. But they are moving so slowly that they will never get to where we can all get if we just do it individually. Mm -hmm. If you and I just say, okay, I'm going to take my responsibility, I'm going to do my part. And then if the, all the other thousands of architects also do that, we will shift much faster individually as a networked group which and we're all networked just because of social media yeah that the profession will shift and the aia will come with us we they will be forced to follow us and so and that's what's i i believe that's what's happening with the aia from my from my perspective is that that enoch and i and and they're and i'm not i'm not saying it's enoch and myself i'm saying that there's a there's a whole group of online uh, uh leaders that are talking about what we're talking about now and the rest of the profession is recognizing it and is enthused about it and excited about mm -hmm. the, the future and they're going there. And the AIA is go, either going to recognize that and respond to that and embrace that or, or they're going to become obsolete too. I know that's ridiculous to hear that, but if they don't respond to what the profession, the majority of the profession is feeling and going, um, and they are, you know, that's the, that's the positive side. When I first started going to AIA conventions, I never heard the word business, ever. It just wasn't, you know, the keynotes weren't talking about it. The, the leaders at the national level were not talking about it. And slowly and over the years, they've started talking about it and it's gotten much bigger. They, they have focused much more on the smaller profession, the smaller professionals, um, the smaller firms. They've had uh, much more uh, information and knowledge 
for business to talk about business and marketing and sales and fees, which is crazy to hear. Um, they've even had at the last convention, they even had a, a small business center. I didn't even know what it was called, but they had like a whole section of the expo mm. that was just about small business. This sort of, they, they helped with your marketing and your headshot and all these different things. And that was so inspiring and so exciting to see the AIA embracing that. And I, so I think the AIA, um, uh, and the RIBA will, will also do the same thing that, that they, the, the younger generation of architects that we were just talking about will become those leaders. Yeah. And so those organizations will shift. Those entrepreneurial kids that are entering the, the profession now will become the leaders of the future of architecture. And so we're going in that direction because they're going in that direction. But like I said, these are massive organizations. So I am an AIA member. I support every, well, not everything they do, but I, I support the AIA, right? And I'm an advocate for membership of the AIA. I think there's a value of being a member. Um, but I don't, I'm not waiting for the AIA to solve any of the problems that I have. I'm going to solve the problems that I have. Yeah. I'm going to focus on the things that I can control. I can't control the AIA. I'm not going to even bother complaining about the AIA. I'm going to do what I need to do for my family and my business. And then I'm going to share as much of that out into the world mm. to inspire others to do the same thing. And if thousands of us do that, the profession shifts in the right direction. Wonderful. Do you, how do you think that this particular time that we're going through right now with, with the coronavirus, is this going to be a catalyst to this kind of shift or pivoting of the industry? Yeah. I, I, as you can hear in my voice and, and what I'm saying, I'm, I'm an optimist, yeah. right? I look at everything from, from the positive side of it. It is devastating. It is a horrible thing. It is, his, is globally, glo globally historic event uh, that has never happened before mm -hmm. where the entire world has shut down and the entire world is being affected by a, an illness, right? It is devastating and it is so frightening to, to think about what's happening and the results of what's, what's going to happen economically when we come out of this because we will solve this problem right? We've had big problems before and we've solved them as a, as a human race. We've solved them and we've come out of it bigger and better and stronger and more intelligent and more advanced because of that, right? And so you have this horrible event happening, but that will happen again. We, yeah. will, we will recover. We will, we will find a, a way to cure the disease, to stop the disease. Coronavirus will go away or be controlled much like other, other illnesses that were devastating to our population, they will find those solutions. Yes, we're going to have a massive economic impact from this. The world is shutting down. Although, I don't really know what's going to happen because the entire world has never shut down before. Yeah. <laughs> right? So economically, we just put everything on hold. So we don't really, I, I know ec economists will tell us what's going to happen, but they don't know either because we've never experienced this where the entire world mm. just hit the pause button. So if, if, if we just hit play again, do we just go back to where we were? No, we'll never go back to where we were. We will, the world has fundamentally shifted. Mm. Um, but I believe we've shifted in a very positive way. I think that everybody going home and working remotely is a very positive thing because the businesses and the companies and the organizations that were resisting that for for decades or a decade because it wasn't available for decades about 10 years they've been thinking about it and resisting it um, and many small companies and small firms have moved in that direction remote businesses I've always said since I've been doing it that it's the future of small business and small firms um, you will start that way it doesn't mean that we will never have brick and mortar ever again but this is this remote uh, access and remote practice and remote business that the world is now experiencing will fundamentally shift the way business is done mm. from this moment forward. We'll never go back to the way it was. You'll never say, okay, everybody's healthy. You know, let's just go back to the way. No, that's not going to happen. There's a new way of doing business because all these big businesses are experiencing what we've known for years of how effective and how efficient and how fantastic working from home and the flexibility that you have, yeah. the freedom that you have. Yes, there's many benefits of working together in, a, in a, an office. And I believe that we'll come out of this in a much more a hybrid manner where 
we have more flexibility. The companies will have a little bit more confidence to allow their, their staff and employees to work remotely because they were forced to experience it and they'll see that it does work if you put the right systems in place and the right yeah. people in place. And so the future looks great, you know, from, from that point of view, from practice, because the big companies specifically, we're going to talk about um, architecture because I think this is happening everywhere, Yeah. but architecture, the big architecture firms who have resisted it because it's difficult, right? To, to shift that, to go from the way they were for, for generations to a new way of doing business, they've resisted it because it's hard to move a company of 200, 300, 500, 600 people mm. into this. But a couple of weeks ago, they were forced to do it in one day, right? They said, okay, by the end of the week, everybody's working from home and they just figured it out. And by the time we get out of this and we're sort of back to quote unquote normal, they will have put in place new policies and new systems and new, new ways of working and, and it will become a much more uh, recognized and valuable way of working. And they'll say, well, there's lots of value at the other end too, the way we were working. And so it'll become this hybrid, mm. um, which I believe is a massive opportunity for architects. This shift, global shift in our culture that just happened last, last couple of weeks, where companies shut down and sent everybody home and then continued to work from home. That is an opportunity because now that's, like I just said, that's going to become a normal way of working for many companies. So thousands of companies are going to be looking for solutions, right? Because you can't work from your closet forever. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So all the people that went home are going to need dedicated workspaces. So there's one opportunity for architects. Build a service, and right now, build a service and a brand and, and a, a, a marketing strategy about when these people sort of get the dust sort of settles and they put their heads up and they start looking around and looking for solutions, you're there to solve those problems for them, right? And you come right in and say, we're an expert in designing, you know, uh, work from home studios and, or an addition for your new home office. Um, and at the other side, at the, at the, the, the business side, now that everybody's more working remotely and have a little bit more freedom, every one of those office spaces are going to have to be rethought about too, right? And redesigned and, 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 and have a new way of working. Those mm. individual workspaces will become a much more collaborative space where all the teams can then maybe on a weekly or bi-weekly basis, they go back to the office and they work collaboratively as teams. So now those design, those spaces are also up for grabs for architects to design those spaces. And now there's two sides, right? There's two ends to this system that we're going to work at, in where we have people working from home and offices that are going to be redesigned to be collaborative spaces. Now there's the systems yep. that are linking those two, which are not buildings, but they're problems, right? How do we create the solutions for those businesses to make those connections and those systems work really smoothly and, and flawlessly? Mm. How do we make sure that the people who are working from home have the communication process and the leaders have the communication process with their teams? You can be that expert, right? Just because it's not a building doesn't mean that we don't have that expertise. If we own both ends of that, we should own everything in the middle of that, yeah. right? And then we can, and, and if you do that right now, if you build that service, right? And you build it into your website and you build it into your marketing, when the dust settles and all these companies realize that, and they're thinking about it right now, those conversations are happening right now with business leaders saying, do we go back to the way it was or do we start planning for the future? Mm. Right. And if you as an architect have positioned yourself to be the expert that solves those problems for those companies and those workers, when they start looking, they go on Google and they start searching for it, you pop up and you're the expert and you start doing a lot, a lot of work. Right. And that's just one opportunity that comes from this. Um, and there's so many other opportunities and, and, and benefits and uh, improvements to the world that will, will eventually come out of this. It, it's absolutely fascinating and, and exciting. And, you know, I'm loving the optimism and energy. Uh, you know, we're kind of going for this process of redefining how we use physical space. And architects were in the prime position to be able to 
be stewards and leaders in that conversation and provide so- solutions to businesses, to to families, to society. It's you know there is there's a whole world of opportunity there. Right. What and 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 if we don't, Ryan, someone else will. Exactly. Because that opportunity is there. Mm. It's coming. It's and it's already there. Like I said, they're already talking about it. They're already planning it. As soon as they're allowed to, businesses are shifting. Right. And so if architects don't embrace it and they don't start building out the systems that that you can become the expert and be recognized as the expert, some other company is going to come in, some tech company is going to come in, or some developer will recognize it, or some entrepreneur will come in and they will build that solution and you will lose it. And and this is so interesting because we've seen this already in architecture when more commercially savvy intelligent businesses come in and they steal parts of the architectural process because they know how to deal with the clients better. They know how to position themselves as the experts. Um, And if we don't do that here, then there's these opportunities that are going to be literally taken away. And we can look at things, you know, like, like Uber, I was interviewing someone recently and they were talking about how a business like Uber or Airbnb, these are architectural solutions. They are right. they, at their heart. They're kind of new ways of using the physical environment as a new solution to transport infrastructure. These projects and aut- autonomous vehicles are, are going to massively change the built environment. Yeah, another opportunity for us. And, and, and these, yeah, and these ideas they, they wouldn't look out of place in in you know in the kinds of Parsons and you know the architectural schools around the world of you know of, of a lot of good thinking and architectural thought. It's all opportunity, all opportunity. Yeah. Very, very, very exciting. Love it. I love it. So where's, where's next for you this year? You've, you're starting up with the gable. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it just keeps, <laughs> it's on its own sort of trajectory, trajectory here. Um, yeah, gable will continue to grow. Gable Media is the focus of gable right now. Well, Entree Architect, like I said, is now owned by Gable Technologies. So Entree Architect is is growing. We are responding to the the, the trends too, and mm-hmm. this, the shifts that are coming in the profession. So we're we're. I just actually hired uh, Jeff Eccles to be on my team to focus specifically on the membership and the community. You may have seen him in the Entree Architect community doing a daily video show called context and clarity. Yeah, I was on there last night watching. <laughs> yeah. He, that, that is a, that's a project that I've hired him to be on the entre architect team. That's one of the, the components of what he's doing as, as a member of our team. Now inside the membership, we're reworking the membership in order to very specifically respond to the, the crisis mm. that we're putting together solutions for, for architects uh, that they can, they can, and it's inside the membership. It won't be additional to the membership. Any member that will have it, um, and so we're working on that, you know, sort of recovery. And then we're putting together, and we're looking ahead and saying, okay, what do we do when this economic crisis hits? Right? Because the crisis mm-hmm. is one thing. What we're doing right now is one thing. What do we do in order to survive and stay stay relevant right yeah. now while, while things are we're crazy? Everybody's looking for solutions. We have some solutions in the knowledge that's already been developed inside the membership. So we're going to focus on that. So this is what you need to look at right now. And then we're going to put additional information together for members to say, oh, here's how you get out of this, right? Here's what you need to do to from this moment forward. And that's going to be a much more long-term plan. Yes. Taking the, the information that we already have in, in the membership, adding more to it, sort of filling in the, the gaps that need to be filled in uh, and creating additional information for, for members inside for long-term um, and we've, in order to help architects gain access to that, we've we've made membership free for 30 days right now. I don't know when we'll shut it down in terms of the free. Uh, it's free for 30 days and it's got a 30 day guarantee. So it's like a 60 day freebie. Um, and we don't even care if you go in there, grab the knowledge you need and get out and cancel it, cancel it. I just, we want to help the architects. And so we've made it 30 days free. Anybody can join. Well, well, yeah, anybody can join the membership. We have the mastermind groups too. So architects, if they're looking for ways to to come together and mm. sort of mastermind and have a peer group, 
you know, masterminds are available as well. That's not free, but that's, that's available as well. Brilliant. What would be your advice for all the one thing that, that architects shouldn't do in the next few months? Oh, that's a good question. I think they shouldn't, should not be listening to mainstream media. I think that right now in the moment of crisis where we're all afraid Mm. and we're all stressed and there's massive anxiety, every one of us are feeling it because we are living in a time of unprecedented horror. It's, it's frightening. Mm. And I believe the mainstream media, their, their job is to keep you watching. And so they are reporting the worst of it. And then they're reporting the things that will make you watch for over and over and over again. And the things that you're watching on mainstream media, on television and listening to the radio and, you know, being on social media on certain areas of social media, when you're feeding that negativity into your, into your mind, it's coming out, you know, it, what you become whatever you're feeding yourself, right? You, you choose what you enter into your brain. And so, that's my biggest advice is stay away from the negativity, mm. stay away from people who are profiting on negativity and stay very focused on positivity. And I'm not saying be naive. I'm not saying, you know, be, be, you know, uh, to, to sh- ignore what's happening. I'm saying be very selective and intentional about what you allowed into, you know, allow into your brain, because what you allow into your brain is going to re- come out right in, in the actions you have and the, and the, and the, which is why I, you know, you say I'm positive and I have this optimistic um, message. That's why, mm. because I know exactly what's happening, right? But I don't need to have people who are profiting on the negativity and the and the and the horror of it uh, to tell me what I need to do. I can't, for one, I can't control any of that, right? I can't control the virus. I can't control the economic situation that's coming our way. I can control everything within my business. I can control everything within my family. And so I put 100% of my effort and focus on my family and my business. And my business is helping architects, right? If, if I can help architects be successful, then the whole world benefits from the success of all those mm-hmm. architects. And in, in, in Enix mission and your mission, it's the same. Yeah. Help architects be successful. So those architects can go out and make the world a better place, right? And so if we just do our part and the things that we can control, and if all the architects out there do the same thing, everybody who's listening right now, shut off the stuff you can't control and focus on the things 100% put all in on the things you can control, you will be, you'll be, for one, you'll be much happier. You'll be a lot less stressed. You'll still be stressed. You'll still have fear. You'll still have anxiety. But those levels of all that that Mm -hmm. you're feeling right now will come way down and you'll feel so much better because you'll be making progress, right? You'll be helping other people. You'll be sharing your knowledge. You'll be solving problems because that's what we do. And so shut off the negativity, ramp up the, you know, turn up the positivity and, uh, and go make the world a better place. There's a lot of opportunity coming our way. Mark, I think that is the perfect place to, to wrap up. Thank you so much for your inspiring message and mission and you know it is a privilege to be sort of standing shoulder to shoulder with you uh, and 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 with Enoch kind of on the same mission of empowering architects around the world to you know grab the the, the next evolutionary phase if you like uh, and all the yeah. all the potential that we've got and what we can offer um, to the world so thank you you're you're welcome, Ryan. Thank you for bringing me on your show and letting me talk because, I, as you can tell, I like to talk. I love it. Yeah, uh, I I like to, to spread our message, um, and and I want to thank you for doing what you do at at Business of Architecture UK and and Enoch what he does and and has built at at Business of Architecture on our side of of the pond. <laughs> um, it I I think that if we all do that. If I do what I do and you do what you do and Enoch does what he does and all the others who are leading and, and building ways of communicating out to the world of what we do as architects and how to, be get, to get better at what we do, the whole world benefits from that. So thank you, Ryan, for, for what you're doing and your part in it. My pleasure. Thank you. Excellent. And that's a wrap. Thank you so much for listening. And don't forget to book your 15-minute chat with me by using the link in the information. I look forward to speaking with you.
The views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the host and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract bond or commitment except to help you be unstoppable.